Hello, everybody, and welcome to the very last part of Unit 4. We're going to have a brief overview and discussion of regulations in elder care. So, what are we talking about here? Um, you know, every elder care has a lot of regulations and a lot of oversight it has to deal with. A lot of people have, I think probably everybody in a business, feel a little put upon by oversight. But there's a lot in elder care, legitimately. Not only do uh, do those facilities have to answer for to local government organizations, they also have, there's a state standard, which at least in Texas, there's a minimum standard for things like restaurants that they have to meet. Local ordinances can be more strict than that. They can't be less strict than that. Uh, within long-term care, there is also a federal minimum standard. So the state can be more strict than the federal standard. It cannot be less strict than that. So there are three levels. All nursing homes, long-term care centers are subject to federal, state, and local regulation. So how did we get here? Uh, way back in the ancient year of 1987, Congress passed the uh, Omnibus Budget Reconciliation Act. This is the this is the bill that is renewed occasionally that has that funds healthcare organizations and programs. You'll see here that part A and B are Medicare and Medicaid, and then subtitle C is nursing home reform. That's how that's their leverage on this. The most common elder care um, funds. I'm sorry, I just kind of blanked on the term there. The, the programs that are most commonly responsible for payer sources for elder care are Medicare and Medicaid. And then nursing homes also may receive money from the federal government. So through that leverage is how they apply their standards. Here's the legalese for you if you really care to look it up. I'm, you can. I'm not going to go over that. So going back to what I said before, in long-term care, federal... The federal standard is the minimum base standard requirements. States and local governments can require stricter rules, but they can't go looser than the federal rules. The federal government passes general control and regulation to the states, so they do have standards, but they do then kind of offload that responsibility of surveying and maintaining those controls to the state by giving them block grants and saying, here, take, take care of that. Uh, occasionally, you will also be, and I've had a couple of these, a federal oversight support survey, which the feds come out and it literally looks like the men in black that show up and go through everybody's stuff. So when that happens, this is the fed team surveying the state team doing a survey to see if they're surveying correctly. It's, um, it's an interesting setup. So within state operations, the topics of concerns are grouped together uh, under numeric tags. For purposes of dietitians, the ones we're, that we are concerned about are 43.6, which is food and nutrition services, 43.25, which is quality of care. That often goes to, um, is more focused on nursing care, but it can impact, is a dietitian available are they doing what they're supposed to be doing? Are they, are, is the facility providing nutritious meals? Are they meeting medical nutritional needs? And 43.35 nursing services, which, you know, sounds like it would be a nursing thing, but it's actually, are there enough people doing what they're supposed to be doing? You will see if a, if a standard is not met, the survey team will issue what's called an F tag, which is a violation of a specific part of the scope of practice. So, for example, ones that come up a lot within the, well, hopefully they don't come up a lot, but within the dietitian scope, it would be F803, which is the nutritive value of the menu does not meet elders' needs, and uh, F692, which is um, enteral nutrition or hydration status. You may also hear about K tags, which are building related. So this would be things like the uh, emergency exits are not marked. The handrail is not at the correct height. Um, almost all of these involve more than one discipline. It's, it's kind of hard to pin down directly who's responsible for, say, a 692. 
Is it that the dietitian didn't do their job correctly in assessing needs? Is it that the nursing staff did not, pro did the dietitian do the needs correctly, but the nursing staff did not follow through on the orders? Uh, is it a different thing entirely? So more than one team is frequently involved or person is involved with these, but some lucky individual gets hit with the uh, with the F tag. F tags are survived, are survived, are assigned a severity. They are here is the table. If you see there from uh, A, which is an isolated incident where there was possibility of harm, but no actual harm found, all the way up to L, which is widespread and immediate jeopardy. If you have something that's qualified as immediate jeopardy, you are required as ability to take immediate action to solve that problem. You'll also be tasked in with the plan of corrections. And what this is, is when a building receives an F tag, they have to include, or they have to respond with how are they going to fix it? What are they going to do to address the plan? It's not like a care plan. What are they going to do to address the plan? How are they going to assess it worked? What are they going to do in the future to prevent it from happening again? So you have to include residents. When you do a plan of corrections, it will include residents that were harmed by the practice, um, if you had a deficient practice, hopefully there's nobody harmed and you could, but you also say who could have been harmed. What are you going to do? What changes are you making? How are you going to monitor them? Um, IDRs are uh, something else you might hear about and you may be involved in, which is the independent resolution. Um, sorry, independent dispute resolution. This is the challenge of the facility can make to a state tag. If the building feels that it was wrongly accused, it can dispute it. Now, you do have to run the dispute at the same time you're doing the plan of corrections. You don't get to not do the plan of corrections. While this isn't like a court case where you can delay any kind of potential outcomes while you're continuing to appeal and argue, um, you still have to make the corrections anyway. But in this case, what happens is that both sides present the case to a third-party arbitrator and that arbitrator, so the state submits its evidence and its argument, the building submits its evidence and its argument, and then the arbitration clause, or the arbitration clause, the arbitration board will make a resolution. And this can continue. I have actually been involved with them that go up to three rounds of disputes back and forth. Also, uh, it's not very common that a, a team, or that a building wins one of these, uh, generally speaking, the state will come out more often. It's because the building feels that it was wrongly, that it, the tag was done in error and they want that on the record. It kind of like when a lawyer makes an objection in a case, they want it on the record that they think this is incorrect, but it's frequently not worth it to continue. Although, as I said, I was once involved in one that went three different rounds. I had to write three different arguments for it. Um, and I actually have won an IDR before, which is, pardon me, but one of my personal favorite, my proudest professional moments. And finally, we'll talk really quickly about the assessed penalties. Like, why, why do they care? Um, because generally speaking, nobody is in the building, nobody is in the business of long-term care to get rich. Um, there's just not that much money in it. A lot of people, most people that are in it are in it because they care, they want to do good work for the elder population, but it's still very scary when the surveyors show up. They will every year because when the state assesses penalties or when they assess F tags, they can assess penalties. They don't often unless they find real harm, but they can. It's always worth, and it's worth mentioning. They can do two things. They can either end funding or they can in, impose a fine or they can do both of those things. Uh, in really, really worst case scenarios. They can also be backdated. Uh, the argument behind this is if you had a sanitation tag, which is an 812, and they found it several times. So um, they came in and you know, three different occurrences found that the kitchen in this facility was not working in a sanitary manner. The argument is, well, you clearly haven't taken this seriously, so we're going to penalize you back to the point when this began. Which can make, you know, it makes sense on paper, and I really do understand it. But it's 
important to note that the tag is assessed and not the infraction. So you can get a sanitation tag for different things. Maybe one time there was a person that forgot to put a hairnet on when they went in. Maybe one time they had trash can lids that were not on the trash cans. And then maybe the third time they had food that was out of, that wasn't dated. Uh, those are all, those are three separate issues. But the argument would be that the kitchen has not run in a sanitary manner for those three years. Uh, this happens a lot for sanitation tags. It happens a lot for infection control. You can see those are two very broad topics. Uh, that is as far as I'm going to go into regulations. And at this point, um, it, I feel like this is kind of a scary note to end on. But I do find long-term care a rewarding field. I find elder care a rewarding and really fascinating field to work in. Uh, don't let the regulations part put you off it. If you found this to be interesting, I would highly recommend looking into it. There are always facilities that are needing some uh, consultant work for diet from dietitians. Give it a try. See what you think. I really enjoyed the course. Hope you all have a great one, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.